Photographs will eventually fade over the years due to either being displayed in a bright room or by unstable dyes used in traditional photographic printing process. So let's place this faded picture on our scanner and restore some of the colours using PaintShop Pro. Now that we've placed the photograph on the scanner we need to bring it into PaintShop Pro. So we go to File, Import, Twain Acquire and this will launch a scanner's interface. Now depending on your own particular scanner your interface may be slightly different to this but fundamentally it will all be the same. And we need to create a preview and here our photograph has been scanned in. Um, we'll have a look on the left hand side here. The document type is a reflective, i.e. that's a colour print and not a, a piece of film. The image type is actually been scanned in an 8-bit grayscale but I want this to be a colour photograph so we'll select 24-bit colour and you'll see that the preview on the right has automatically changed. Our resolution, well I was scanning in film which requires a very high resolution of 3200 but for colour prints we don't need that higher resolution so we're going to set that down to about 300 dpi. And the document size, well this is defined by your selection area, the, the scan selection so we can actually move the selection area in and you don't have to be too precise about making your selection at this stage because we can refine this in PaintShop Pro later on. And I'm also going to zoom in to fill the entire preview up on the preview screen. Now our target size is the original, so the target size is going to be the same as our document size, which is 3.5 by roughly 5 inches, 4.97. Um, if we expand the target size, we can see that the scale is 100%. If I want to make it bigger, I could increase the percentage here. On the adjustment side, I don't want the scanning application to make any adjustments whatsoever, so I'm going to reset this because we can actually have finer control in PaintShop Pro. So now all that remains to be done is to actually scan the picture and we'll press the scan button. Our scanned picture has now been opened in PaintShop Pro but I'm going to trim it up because I don't require this outside border here. So we're going to select the crop tool on the left and we can refine the crop area by just dragging in the, the borders top and sides and this is, makes a very precise crop. Now we can either double click within the selection area or we can press the apply button and this has now generated our crop for us. Well as you can see the photograph has faded over the years but there's a very nice feature in PaintShop Pro where we can rectify this and we'll find that under adjust, color and fade correction and this opens a small dialog panel. Um, we can expand this and this actually applies to any filter that you use in PaintShop Pro. It will actually enlarge your preview for you. So the amount of correction we have at the bottom here is from 1 to 100. The more you go up, the higher you go in value, the more contrast you gain. So actually I don't want too much contrast on this. So I'm going to reduce it down to approximately about 10. And that's kept sufficient detail in the hair as well. So we'll accept that. Although there is still a little bit of blocking there of detail and what I can use now is another filter which is called Fill Flash and you can find that under the Adjust Fill Flash and again a similar dialog panel opens and here we can see that a little bit more detail has been put back into the hair and you can vary the strength um, I think somewhere around about the 20 mark will be sufficient for this but you can go anywhere you want. The saturation, I'm going to keep this at 10 and we'll click OK on there. The final stage is to actually remove some of the small spots here. You can see a slight bit of fungus that's appeared on the actual print and some spots on the face as well. Now we could use the clone tool but a better tool to use is the makeover tool which you can find here on the left and we'll choose the blemish fixer. Now this brings up a brush which has got two values inside there. There we go. We've got an inner circle and an outer circle. The inner circle is the bit that's going to be corrected and the outer circle defines the area which is going to be sampled. So if I put this circle on top of the spot there we can see that the hair and the face is also going to be selected so I don't want that. So if I hold down the Alt key and then holding down the mouse button 
and pushing the mouse up or down I can vary the size of the circle so there we've got quite nice stuff and it's automatically just deleted it and we can just go around the entire picture deleting it and vary the brush size according to how much area you want selected and it's a very quick process and this is far better than the clone tool but the blemish fixer does a very good job with it it's well worth experimenting um, zoom into your picture by pressing the scroll wheel on your mouse and that will um, zoom into the picture and if you want to move the picture around just hold the spacebar and the hand appears and you can actually move the picture around in your screen so we'll just click on there and a little bit under lip there and I think that's more or less it actually it's a very fast process and there we are um, for a final touch I'm actually going to increase the saturation just a fraction so we go to adjust hue and saturation hue and saturation lightness or shift and H and I just want to increase the saturation by a, an extra 10 to 15 percent there we are. it's just giving it a little bit more color and we we'll select OK.